what's happening in this wheel aka sir william and today i'm going to be reviewing the general grabber atx all-terrain tires what i like about them what i dislike about them and what i recommend them for you let's get started i want to start off by telling you this is probably going to be a little bit of a different type of tire review than what you're likely used to seeing on youtube first and foremost i have zero affiliation with general tire and i don't sell tires they didn't give me this set of tires i had to buy the set of tires and here's the receipt to prove it Secondly, this is not an initial tire review. A lot of folks will put a new set of tires on their truck and then they'll go and do a video on their first impressions or maybe three months or six months afterwards. I've had these tires for well over a year now and I've put over 50,000 extremely hard miles on. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to go check out some of the other videos of the adventures that I've taken my 4Runner on and the abuse that these tires have seen. But I assure you, they have seen some absolute abuse maybe even torture. They've seen every type of terrain imaginable from mud, sand, rocks, you name it, these tires have done it. Now I started overlanding all around the United States in Apple, my Toyota 4Runner back in 2015. And since then I've had three sets of tires. I started out with a Nitto Terra Grappler all-terrain, went to a BF Goodwrench KO2 all-terrain, and now I have the General Grabber ATX all-terrain. So you'll hear me compare this tire to those other sets of tires, all of which have experienced similar abuse and conditions. If you don't feel like watching the entire video and you're only here to see if I would recommend the General Grabber ATX all-terrain, terrain tire? The answer is yes. I would absolutely recommend this tire to anybody and everybody that's looking for an all-terrain tire. With that said, I want to show you guys how they've worn over the past 50,000 miles of abuse, as well as give you the goods and the bads of the tire itself. First, let's start off by looking at the tread. As you can see, there's some wear on these treads and you can see some significant chunking and different things like that. This is the uh, front left. This is the front right. Some chunking right there. The rear. And last but not least, the left rear. As you can see, they've all got a pretty even amount of chunking on them and pretty even amount of tread on them. Unfortunately, I don't have any coins to show you the depth, but if I, uh, if I had to guess, I probably still have Abe Lincoln's head in there. I'm almost positive of it. But as you can see, there is some pretty significant chunking. And the reason that, that happens is, is as the tire wears down, the lugs just can't bend anymore. So what they do is they end up breaking off. And this typically happens as you get more and more miles on a tire. Since I go off road so much, I'm often running these tires well below the recommended 32 PSI at somewhere around 20 and sometimes even 15 PSI. Whenever you run on pavement with low PSI in your tire, you build up heat and heat is bad for anything and tires are no exception the more excess heat you have the more problems you're gonna have with wear and different things like that that said the general grabbers have done fantastic at handling this abuse surprisingly they've worn pretty evenly all the way around now one thing I have done in order to preserve the tires as much as possible is I keep the tires rotated every 5,000 miles I ensure that I get these tires rotated so that way I can get the maximum performance out of them and as you can see you can tell within the tread pattern now let's move to the outside side of the tire starting with this front left here you can see some significant spots here where they've been cut into and this is from rocks and different things like that to be honest with you I don't know how I haven't punctured the side of this tire now this is an e-rated tire which I highly recommend an e-rated tire a 10 ply tire if you will those are a whole lot stronger and they're gonna be able to handle the abuse a whole lot better but yeah, you can see here that this thing is pretty cut up, but it's still performing and it's still doing well. Over here on the front right, you can see the same thing. You see a lot of cuts in the sidewalls there, and a lot of scuffing and a lot of chipping and different things like that. And that's all from hitting rocks and going through extremely rough terrain. Moving on to the right rear, it's a similar story over here. Again, it's chunked up, chipped up, cut up and everything you can imagine but it's still holding in there and performing. This one's even got a piece missing out the back here. Left rear, similar story, but you see here, this has got a significant hole looks like in there. 
but it's not leaking from there. Again, it's scuffed up, cut up, skimmed up, and all the above, but it's still running good. So as you can see, these tires are pretty well beat up. With that said though, I still have confidence enough in these tires that I don't hesitate to hop on the interstate and do 80 miles an hour or go on an overlanding trip. As a matter of fact, currently right now where I'm filming, I'm in the middle of a trip through Colorado on the Colorado backcountry discovery route that is a solid mix of around 70 to 30% off-road to pavement overlanding across the northern portion of Colorado all the way down to the southern portion and I'll experience every type of terrain imaginable on this trip and I have all the confidence that the general grabber will bring me through it just fine. Now each of these tires have at least one patch or plug in them and as a matter of fact I think this is the only tire that still consistently holds a steady air pressure. Now none of the punctures have come from any rocks or anything like that. It's mostly been road debris or nails, different things of that nature. As opposed to my Nittos that I had where I punctured them five times on one trip just off the little rocks that are in the forest service roads. All right, how do they handle? That's what everybody wants to know. So let's break that down into a couple different categories starting with on-road performance. On-road, this is the smoothest, quietest, and most balanced all-terrain tire I've ever put on a vehicle period, hands down. They don't make that much noise in cab, and they've stayed that way from the time that they were brand new all the way up until now with 50 plus thousand miles on them. Generally, you'll find that all terrain tires start to get louder or any tire starts to get louder the more miles you get on them, and I haven't found that to be the case with the Generals. As far as wet weather performance go, the General do pretty well. I think that the BFGs do better. I did have one particular time with the Generals that I was going down a steep hill and it had a sharp turn at it and the back end kind of came out from underneath. It was quite scary. Luckily, Apple has traction control and all that good stuff. So wet weather, I'd say that it does pretty well. If I had to do a 1 to 10, I would say probably a 7 as far as overall on-road performance though I would give these a 9 out of 10. Off-road performance is going to be broke down into a couple different categories as well. So first let's start off with sand. In loose sand such as the beach or sand dunes different things like that when you properly air these down this is a phenomenal tire this thing got me all throughout the sand dunes of oklahoma it's gotten me all throughout the beaches of outer bank so it's definitely a good tire in the sand as with the bfg now the nitto i got stuck in the uh, sand twice i got stuck once out in the beach of oregon and then i got stuck in the sand one other place too i can't remember but i think that might have been from not properly airing down so i won't necessarily compare it compared to the BFG, BFG though, these two are both neck and neck. The General Grabber ATX is a fantastic tire in the sand so long as you air them down properly. And for that, I will give them 10 out of 10 for an all-terrain tire in the sand. Now let's talk about mud. This is where the puppy dogs and rainbows quickly go away for the General Grabber ATX. Now, notoriously, all-terrain tires don't do good in mud, and the ATX are no different. There's only been a handful of times that I've been stuck, and most of which have been with the General Grabber ATX. Now, some of the sketchiest situations I've ever been in have also been because of this tire. For whatever reason, what I've found is that the General does not have a side lateral traction that is as good as something like the BFG All-Terrain, only on mud though is where i've really found this downfall and as you can see here it's ended up in body damage not once this time but twice the same exact thing each time the tire falls down into a tree or falls down into a mountain as was the case in kentucky both of which were on slippery surfaces also another sketchy situation that i found myself in that also had the same problem with that side lateral traction was i was on a a steep cliff trying to make it up it was really really muddy it was red clay mud again these are not conditions that all-terrain tires are made but for. where I was and how I was stuck I literally had inches to where if it were to go any more sideways I would just roll over down this hill and these tires kept wanting to slide sideways instead of pick up forward momentum if it wasn't for the fact that i had the traction board set up the way that i did in this particular occasion then it could have ended in disaster so as far as mud goes i'm going to give these tires like a four maybe a five in a scale of one to ten the bfgs did a little bit better in the mud although not tremendously better 
both these tires you're going to have to air down a lot and the nitto terra grapplers they're just not made for mud at all period so if you're going to be in a whole lot of mud if you're going to find yourself in a whole lot of mud an all-terrain tire is probably not going to be the best for you and a mud terrain tire is going to be what you look for if you're looking for a general tire you can go with the general x3 which is a great mud tire the uh, bfg km3 is a great mud tire also the toyo mt is a great mud tire so so if you're going to be in mud, make sure that you get you a proper tire. It's kind of like having the right tool for the right job. You just, you're going to need it. The reason that I went with an all-terrain tire, though, is because I typically try to stay out of the mud. I don't intentionally go into the mud. And I do a lot of highway driving and a lot of long-distance dirt road driving. So an all-terrain tire works out better for that. Also, not to mention it's a whole lot cheaper. But the next tire that I get, because of these sticky situations and the body damages that it's caused is going to be a mud terrain tire i'm gonna try that out for a little while and i'll let you guys know but as far as mud goes the general grabber atx on a scale of one to ten i'm going to give it a four or a five it's just not good in mud now let's talk about rocks they do great and depending on where you're at in the United States or where you're traveling to is gonna depend on the type of rocks that you have. For example, if you go out to Moab in the middle of the summer when there's no rain, you could drive around on those rocks with slick tires and it really doesn't matter. Versus if you go to the Southeast, you find a lot of slippery rocks. So with these tires, I found that they perform great when aired down properly on a wide range of rocks. I've had no problems on rocks in the Southeast, no problems in the Southwest, no problems in the north. For the next category of off-road performance, let's talk about dirt and gravel roads. With the General Grabber ATX on dirt and gravel roads, I found that I would push through the corner a lot or slide out on the corner. And what I mean by that is, say you're going down a steep hill and you got a sharp corner, whenever you turn the wheel, there was a lack of response there. It would kind of push through and just slide straight on through. Or if, particularly if you hit the brakes, um, you would slide the back end around a little bit more um, and I found this to be uh, even worse as the tires aged so for the dirt and gravel roads I would give the general grabber a 7 out of 10 rating now this is pretty common with other all-terrains. I had the same uh, experience with the Nittos and the same experience with the BFGs, though I will say that the General Grabber tend to do it a little bit more, I feel like. All right, and last but not least is snow. Now, I really can't comment much on snow because I try to avoid snow at all costs. I don't like snow. And ironically enough, while trying to run from the snow earlier this year, I got caught in Texas where they got anywhere between about six to eight inches of snow over the course of a few days, and they weren't able to plow off the roads in the area of Texas that I was at. So I did get some experience driving with the Grabber ATX in the snow, but it was very minimal and they felt great. I never felt out of control. I never lost control. I always felt that it just went right where I pointed it to, and it did, it did fine for what I've done in the snow. It is a snow rated tire. It does have the siping in the lugs, which that helps with not only wet weather performance, but also snow performance. So I can't really give you guys a rating, but I will say based off the little experience that I have, they did great in the snow. All right, so wrapping up, my thoughts are the General Grabber ATX All-Terrain Tire is a fantastic tire, and I highly recommend it to anybody and everybody that's looking for a good all-terrain tire that's going to give you long life and exceptional performance. But if you're going to be exploring some areas that are a lot more muddy, like the Southeast U.S. or the Northwest U.S., then I would recommend going for something like a mud terrain tire, as the all-terrain tires in general just do not perform well in these types of situations. I hope that you guys like this review. If you do, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends. If you want to follow more of our adventures, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications when new videos come out. I appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, peace.